Blah. <laughs> and then let me ask you this, because I this not much is known about this time. That's why it's so fascinating to talk to you about this, even more so than like Misfits '95. Um, what? So what happened? So so again, for anybody for anybody who is unaware, at some point, and maybe Mike can fill in the, the holes because I don't know. At some point, I think Jerry and Doyle's father is like, "What are you stupid? Like, go after, go after the the misfits name, go get that misfits thing going." So they hire one lawyer. That first lawyer doesn't work out. They get a second lawyer. They start doing a bunch of lawsuit stuff. And this is my question for Mike: right. When right. does the shift happen where they're like, "This Christ the Conqueror stuff is going nowhere"? When does Doctor Chud? come into the picture wasn't he christ the conqueror drummer too and then it became the misfits like what do you ha have any like information about this all right i can't i cannot uh give any information about chud i only knew chud right. after he became the misfits drummer gotcha that's, okay that's chud, chud right uh as far as when i first met jerry in fact i also have paperwork from the lawsuit that uh, wow gave me yeah um because initially what jerry had me doing until i realized what i was doing was betrayal jerry had me going out buying misfit bootlegs to, ah. so that he could use them in court yeah now, to track stuff down now, yeah i have something that nobody has i have a video documentary of me videotaping all the all of my records right all, all of my misfit records while jerry does the narration of who was on the record when it was recorded how much was paid for it Unbelievable. And, and who did what so now i have i have a copy of that no one else has it except maybe a lawyer who probably threw it out you gotta you better digitize it before that tape rots right. make sure that yeah. gets digitized i've been doing that lately actually Good. so anyway my point Good. was this yeah. um so when I first met Jerry, he was already in the process of doing the paperwork to lay out to take Glenn to court. Right. Now, the first the first uh, lawyer he hired was not an entertainment lawyer. So the guy was not exactly. Yeah, he sucked, right? He, he wasn't know, good. Yeah. Well, he just didn't know how that business worked. Gotcha. Here's what really bothered me. As the, as the lawsuit progressed, Jerry took notes on the things that he did now you got to keep in mind glenn wrote all the music all the uh -huh. rhythm all the lyrics composition and so when you do that you are essentially the prime writer of the song once you write right. the the melody and, and and the lyrics and you composite right. it together it is your song so now right. if anybody else in the band if a drummer hits a cymbal that wasn't actually, you know, part of, uh, uh, or does a drum roll or something that wasn't actually part of the melody, that song still belongs to the writer. Right. So what Jerry did, Jerry was writing notes on, okay, so the song, uh, Devil's hate, Warehouse, the song Hate Breeders. Okay. So when the song Hate Breeders is playing and you hear the part that goes, whoa, I sing that. So he wrote down, like literally wrote down the, the letters O O H O O H H H H H H H H O H H H H H H H H. I I did that. That was my part. I wrote that. And he wanted royalties for that. So he has me buying these records, and I realize I'm like, what am I what am I doing? I'm actually helping him set up a lawsuit against Glenn Danzig. I had nothing against Glenn Danzig. Right. I actually liked Glenn Danzig. I liked right. Sam, yeah, Sam Hain and yeah. Danzig. So I eventually realized what was happening. And I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I want to be part of this. And I, I backed away. I was still yeah. his friend. I, I knew Jerry and Doyle for 11 years before right. I joined the band in 1998. So I kind of was kind of disturbed that I was being used as a if you will, a pawn, uh, for right. lack of a better term, to go out, buy these records and use them in a lawsuit against Glenn Danzig. I, I, I really, but you know, my defense is that I was young. 
I was heavily influenced just being around Jerry and like, you know, he's your, a, he's your hero, man. He's my hero. I used to smoke yeah. a joint with the guy, you know, I used to right. play, I used to go up and hang out with his, his family. I mean, he was a friend of mine. Right. And, uh, you know, it just, I, I saw I things I, I, to me, I stepped back and from a perspective, I saw things that I felt weren't exactly what you would let a friend do. Gotcha. I kind of felt used. Gotcha. Um, but what's interesting is, but when is the, when is there, is there a moment or is there a time where they're like, this Christ the Conqueror thing is not clicking? I was going to answer that too. Go ahead. So the closer we got to 1995, Jerry had switched gears and realized he wanted he wanted the the misfits to come back and I'll, i remember when the when the when the coffin uh box set came out for the misfits with all the songs that was released by roadrunner records first of all they settled out of court with glenn for something like i don't know correct me if i'm wrong two million was it um, it was it was with caroline records not right. roadrunner i don't think right but they they caroline right right, right. yeah Okay. And they they settled out of court. They got like a, I don't know two million dollars. They million. paid. They paid the settlement. You know, they paid. The, none of the money came out of Glenn's pocket. It came from. That's right. It came from Carol. The, yeah. The reason Caroline. the reason the box set was released was to make money back yeah. for right. all the money that they had spent on right. the the lawsuit. Just to free and, it up. Yeah. And as I as I said, you know, Jerry got everybody involved too. And, and as a matter of fact, he got everybody involved. Almost everybody. Except Almost everybody. Bobby Steele. Bobby Steele. Which I was blown away. I mean, this guy and Joey Image. I don't think Joey Image was initially involved either. No, Joey. Joey got some because I I've got paperwork that has Joey's name on, but not Bobby. Okay. Not Bobby. I was blown away. I couldn't believe that. Yeah. You, what you don't like the guy and just gonna like not give him. Any they credit? they keep, Jerry had Jerry always had a thing against Bobby, dude. He always did. It went back all the... All, so, let all, me ask you. So, do you think that that uh, justifies the fact oh that he got... Oh, my God, no. He Absolutely got, he not. Takes, takes the, the, the record label to, to court or, or sues them to get royalties for everybody else except Bobby Steele? What, what, what is... That's, that's not fair. That's just... Fair. That's favoritism. And that's why I, I, I didn't like his ethics. You know? Yeah. Like, has nothing yeah, it's like that's, whatever he felt was right he did it his way right so so at some point he's just going like we we should right. get on this this misfits train right. and so, so suddenly, the closer we got to 95 is when he started yeah. realizing i want to do the misfits again and then once he got the law the lawsuit settlement it was in his right according to the lawsuit settlement that he was allowed to use the name and play the songs live uh, as a new misfits band however they yeah were, they were not allowed to record any old misfits songs so right. when evil when two. when evil live 2 yeah. right which made no sense so they release evil live 2 and there's at least one or two songs that are old misfit songs on there right oh, i told i think it's I, a bunch of I told Glenn about that because Glenn and I had become friend, friends. We became acquaintances right. after my uh, involvement with the band. And I told him, I said, you do. It was you. 